Welcome back. So this next video is a little different. It's very important. Let me put that out there first, but it's a little different than uh, the other things we've been learning so far. So we're talking about Flexbox here, which is a thing that we haven't really talked about at all, and it exists outside of Bootstrap, but we're going to talk about it inside of Bootstrap, which is weird. Uh, and I would leave that off except for the fact that it's so important to Bootstrap 4. So as you've already seen on the docs, uh, this change sheet talks about Flexbox like a million times. It's the only thing bolded here under the main changes section, but then move to Flexbox here. I mean, if I do a search for Flex, yeah, it shows up 24 times on this document about changes. It's, it's a really huge change. Now, you don't have to know about it. You don't have to take advantage of it. As you, we, I mean, we've been working with all these components, nav bars and, and buttons and everything. We haven't had to use Flexbox anything at all. But if you do know about it, if you do understand what Flexbox is, then you also learn about what the Flex utilities are in Bootstrap. It can be very powerful. So let me just lay out what we're looking at. Let's talk about something like border. So we can set a border on our own without Bootstrap, but we can also use the border utility to make it easier. We can change the display property on our own using CSS, or we can use what we just learned, use the display utility to do it for us using Bootstrap. The same thing with Flexbox. So Flexbox includes a bunch of CSS properties to move things around to position elements inside of a container, inside of a page, and you can do it all without Bootstrap. But Bootstrap also comes with, at least in Bootstrap 4, a whole bunch of utilities that have to do with Flexbox. So if you go to Utilities, Flex, you'll see what I'm talking about. So there's a lot to cover here, and I'm not going to get to every single point. But there are different utilities here. For example, we've already seen this one, d-flex. It makes something display property set to flex. You could do that easily without Bootstrap. There are other properties. For example, we'll get to things like flex direction, where we can say flex row or flex row reverse. You can do all of that without Bootstrap. But we're going to learn it through the lens of Bootstrap. So I just want to make that clear up front, that what I'm showing you exists outside of the Bootstrap world Flexbox is a model for positioning content inside of a box, basically, and it's really useful, and Bootstrap makes it very, very easy to do. So let me just show you an example, a hypothetical situation where we could use Flexbox. So I have a new document again, and in this one, I'm just going to make a div, and this div for now is going to just contain two, let's, let's do a button, and this first one will be btn info, and it's going to be a large button and it's going to just say large and then we'll do another one that will be btn warning and it's not going to be large it's going to be small and they're both inside of a div okay now on this div i am going to give it a border let's give it a border of uh border dark okay so here's our hypothetical scenario we have two items two buttons inside of this div and let's say we want to move them around Maybe I want them to be centered in this div, or I want the left one large to be on the left, and I want the small one to be all the way on the right. Or maybe I want them to be uh, sort of in the middle, not totally centered together, but I want them to be uh, spaced apart. Or maybe I want them both on the right side. And that's just talking about positioning them horizontally, left to right. What if this div was a lot taller? I'm actually going to change that right now. I'm going to give this div uh, style, and this is not really good practice, but just to make it easier for you to see, let's give it, sorry, a height, not a width, a height of 200 pixels. All right, so it's pretty tall now. So I could also talk about centering things vertically, or putting them at the bottom, or one at the top and one at the bottom. So Flexbox gives us the ability to do this pretty easily. But the first thing we have to do is make the container a flex box, a flexible box. So we saw how to do that in the last video. I'm going to go to the container and give it D dash, not F, D dash flex. And if I refresh, you'll notice a change. What just happened is that our content is still all on the left side, but it now takes up this entire container. It like stretches vertically. So we'll come back to that. We're not going to fix that right away. So what you need to know about Flexbox is that there are two directions that we need to know about. The first by default, the main axis of our content is from left to right. So if I say the start of our flex box 
it's on the left side. The end is on the right side. Then there's also what's known as the cross axis, which is by default from top to bottom. So if I say the start of our cross axis, it's at the top, the end is at the bottom. Now, it's kind of confusing to remember all of that at once, but just remember, I'm gonna show you a property in Bootstrap that lets you change how items are distributed across the main axis. So that's gonna go from left to right. And then I'll show you another one that allows you to change how something is distributed vertically on the cross axis from top to bottom. But the crazy thing is, we can also change the direction of our flexbox so that it goes from right to left or bottom to top. So it gets a little crazy, but we're just gonna start like this. So when I say the flex direction, it's left to right. When I say the main axis, when I say cross direction or cross axis, it's top to bottom. So if we're working with this left to right axis, there is a property called justify content. Justify content allows us to move the items in this flex box. And the default value is justify content start. If this is the start on the left side, it's the default value. Our content is over on the left side. But now if I say justify content end, let's see what happens. So the default is justify content start. I don't have to specify it. But if I say justify content end and save, it goes over to the right side. And just to show you that this is not a bootstrap specific thing, if we look at what is actually set on the flex box, justify content is set to flex end. So it's a shortcut using bootstrap, but behind the scenes, there's a thing called justify content with the value of flex dash end. So it's a little shorter and easier, but this is turning into real CSS. Okay, so justify content end moves everything to the right. We also have center, refresh, and now they are centered. But we also have another property called between, and this will take all the available space and put it between the two items or however many items are in there. So if I introduced another item, another button, and let's just say this is just another, I don't know, primary, and I just say this one is also small. Now all that space is distributed between the items. And finally, we have another property which is around, justify content around. And justify content around is going to take that space and distribute it evenly between and around them so that there's space between the end of the container and the items. So whatever we have in there, it doesn't have to be three buttons. It could be five buttons. It could be once we're talking about the grid, we could have images or whatever it is, text. We can move things around on this direction using those properties. So justify content start, end, center, around, and between. And on the documentation, you can see that, if we keep going down here, justify content. These are the different variations. Start, end, center, between, and around. So the next thing, that has to do with the main axis from left to right. But what about top to bottom? Maybe I want them all to be on the bottom. I don't want them to stretch like this. Well, if we keep going down, there's another property called align items. The default value is something called stretch. So stretch takes up all of that space. But what we can do is change it to start, for example, and they'll move to the top. Or I can do center and they'll move to the center on the cross axis. So let's try it again. I'll come back here and this time I'm saying align items and let's do start. So when we say start, on the line items, we're referring to the cross axis, top to bottom, so the start is the top. And if I refresh, now our buttons are aligned up top. And I can change it again, the same values are available, so end is gonna move them to the bottom. I could also do center. So here is an easy way to center things vertically, and if I change this one, justify content center, they're now centered inside of this box, vertically and horizontally. And it's just, what, a couple of classes we added to the container. No matter what we put in here, it's going to be centered vertically and horizontally. And I should note that all of these are responsive as well, which is a bit much for us to get into at this point. But we can change things so that they are centered on medium, and then on large, they are, I don't know, aligned to the start or the end. So all of them, we can say justify content large center, or medium end. So those are the two most important things to talk about so far justify content, and then also align items. But next, I'm gonna show you something that's gonna kind of flip 
everything on its head because we can actually change the direction of the axis, 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 right? Anyway, we can change the direction so that we're no longer going from left to right. Maybe we're going from right to left or maybe from top to bottom. So that's coming up next.